name is Sharon Brill. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I found myself lost in this deep daydream the other day. I don't know if it's because we can't go on holiday. Although, to be fair, I'm not a huge fan of regular long holidays. I like to go to new places and see new things. But uh, whether it's just because I just can't now. And um, everything seems to have converged on all things French at the moment. And I found myself lost in this thought of how influenced I have been over the years from my very early sort of years as a young musician, you know, my teens, of how heavily influenced I've been by kind of modern French music. And I found myself doing this mental rummaging through all of my music and and I realised just how much it's been such a huge part of my life as well. It perhaps comes at a time where I've suddenly had this great urge to start trying to learn French again, right back to basic school French. And, and maybe that's as well to do with the fact that one of my pupils, a lovely young man in France, I have a pupil there at the moment, he's in France at the moment, and... Uh, you know, so I've been trying to think, his English is so, so fab compared to my French. I'm, I'm quite ashamed by it really. I've been trying though. So, bonjour Kylian. Tu joues très bien du piano et tu travailles beaucoup. C'est très bien. Au revoir. A bientôt. I don't know if that's any good, but I'm really, I'm trying. So I'm learning. So it's, it's all converged onto all things French. So... I wondered if you'd like to share the moment with me, so here we go. First of all, I think I have to start, I'm not going in any particular chronological order here, but I have to start with Gabriel Faure. And the big life-changing work is Faure's Requiem. I've sung this a number of times and I'll put some links in the cards and uh, where I'm restricted for cards, I'll just put loads of links into the description box below. And just to have a listen to this music that's just, it's so beautiful, it's really shaped my life. And in a previous vlog recently, I've been talking about the uh, Morse TV series. And years ago, we went on a little unofficial tour around all of the various morph sites in uh, Oxford. And we actually went to the college and we stood on the grass. I don't think you're supposed to do that. But we stood on the grass where, in the final episode of Morse and in the final book, um, where it tells about his final attack as he falls in the college grounds. And, and another in the, in the TV programme, Full Ray's Requiem in Paradisum is playing and it's just beautiful. The whole work is beautiful. I do recommend that you listen to the whole work. I've sung it a few times, but in Paradisum just will never, ever grow old. So there we have that. So Gabrielle Foray. Uh, the Requiem is divine. And then here we've also sung many times the Cantique de Jean Racine. Uh, here's a picture of Foray. What a marvellous moustache. I'm quite in love with his moustache, to be honest. And uh, Jean Racine was a playwright. and He took, uh, I think it was sort of a, a Latin text, a, a liturgy, and set it to French. And then we've sung that a few times. And um, because I'm trying to learn French, I've been copying out some French poems. So I thought, well, this would be a good one. So, you know, looking at French poems and looking at the translations, just to try and help me to put things into context. Of course, who can talk about French music, and particularly French Impressionist music, without discussing Debussy? And uh, Debussy's Gollywog Cakewalk, that was a massive part of my life. I practised that for auditions and things, and it was one of the first substantial works that I played. Uh, I think it was about 18, 19 when I played that. It's just a great piece. It's such great fun to play. Uh, and occasionally I blow the cobwebs off and give that a bit of a go again. But that was quite formative in my piano playing history, really. And then who doesn't love a little bit of Claire de Lune? In fact, my daughter had this played as she was going down the aisle. Her friend of ours, um, a Romanian pianist, who um, she met while her brother was at the Royal Northern. 
played it for on a CD. She recorded it because she couldn't be there at the day. And actually, some of the sheet music was then um, chopped up and made into flowers to go in her wedding bouquet. And I was reading the poem that the piece is based upon, Claire de Lune. And so I see that Claire de Lune means moonlight. And this is where my head goes off on a little holiday. And so I was thinking, well, Claire must mean light. Claire is a name in our English language now, isn't it? And so that must be where it came from. And a lot of our language is littered with French, isn't it, from the various invasions. And, and then I thought, well, OK, if Claire means light, I wonder if... Is this where the word éclair comes from? The shoe bon? Is, is it light and fluffy and so éclair? I don't know. I just thought, oh, I wonder where that word éclair came from, because Claire means light. And so um, the text is, is quite a, a lovely poem, but then the music, of course, is amazing. And then another French composer in a slightly more progressive in that sort of impressionist phase, I think, slightly more dissonant than Debussy, I think, is uh, Olivier Messiaen. And, and I love this, um, La Colombe, the Dove. And the, the way the music looks on the paper makes it look like it's really, really tricky. And yes, there are some tricky bars, but the fact that it's on three staves looks really, really impressive. You've got, but I think it's just the composer just showing which bits are which melody. So they've sort of done the work for us. This is kind of the accompaniment. This is like a bell-like theme that sings out over the top. It's just so beautiful. So that was another massive, in fact, I'm revisiting that at the moment and I've forgotten a couple of bars. It's like, oh, what notes that? So I'm just having another go of that now. And it got me thinking about the um, painters, really, and the artwork of kind of around that time, the Impressionists. And I'm thinking of the Surat it's very famous uh, pointillist painting where they make lots of dots form into pictures and his most famous is the Sunday afternoon on the island of uh, Le Grand Jotte. And I thought about it, I thought, well, you know, that pointillist painting kind of makes me think that really as musicians, that's what we do. We take lots of dots, as in blobs of music, and paint a picture, don't we? And, and so it kind of presents in visual form what I think we do in music. And so it just caused me to think of you know, celebrating all these things French. And um, actually, while we're on the subject of art, my favourite artist actually is Czech, Alphonse Mucha, but his most famous prolific period was in Paris. And, and we tend to think of him as sort of Parisian. He isn't really, but that's where he really sort of made his name and his home. And that's a lot of the case, isn't it? I mean, my friend, she went on holiday in Paris and went on, on a little private sort of personal tour of Père Lachaise, the cemetery where so many famous people are buried. And so Chopin is buried there. And so, OK, Chopin is not French, he's not Parisian, but so much of his uh, career and output was based around Paris. He's kind of adopted as a French composer. I think that's true of a lot of them. So even though some of the composers we love aren't French, I think Paris had a great input into their compositional style and output. And if you go to Père Lachaise, there's um, you know, absolute tributes of flowers around Chopin's grave all the time. Whilst we're on this bizarre note of uh, graves and cemeteries, I don't know how I came across this, but I came across an image of um, the grave of the author, Jules Verne. And his tombstone's really quite scary. It's got the sculpture of his face. I think the sculptor took like a death mask. And he's kind of climbing out of the grave, reaching up. Uh, with surrounded by all these books and things and it's like oh that's it's quite it's quite gothic really so uh, whilst we're on the subject of piano music though French piano music it doesn't always have to be horrendously difficult I know the old 19 to 20, 20 piano syllabus there's a beautiful piece of music on the grade four syllabus and I shall definitely be saving this for future reference and I think this is where we have to remind ourselves that Composers didn't write this music to be an exam piece. They wrote it because they liked the music. And this is a beautiful piece, Holiday in Paris. And it, it's just so 
essentially Parisian. And once you've played it, once you've heard it, you just think, oh, you know, I really need café au lait and a croissant now. It's just so evocative of a, a walk down a Parisian street in a sunny morning. Another one of my favourite pieces, and one of my GCSE students is having a go of this at the moment um, for his GCSE performance, is Sati Gymnopedie. Uh, I did this, I studied this a little bit for my diploma as well, and it's a very simplistic sort of melody, almost nursery rhyme, simple, and, and that doesn't detract from the fact that it's actually really beautiful and quite tricky to play, although the notes aren't horrendously difficult. It's a very bare, open style playing, so, it, it, you know, you've got to have some presence to carry that piece through, I think. Simple isn't always easy, if that makes sense. Um, I played this for, um, well, I recorded it onto a CD because I was otherwise engaged being with family. I played it for my mother-in-law's funeral, actually. Because it is sad, but I think that doesn't detract from the beauty of it. It's just a beautiful piece. Also, I say that, but then when you think about it, a gymnopedy, think of the Greek gymnast and how they used to train and of course it's gym muscles physical and they trained naked didn't they so how this beautiful little piece is related to that topic I don't know but I've said before Sati was a he was, he was a strange one so we'll just chalk that down to quirkiness so we've done choral, we've done piano, so it's only fitting that I go on to flute. And in terms of French flute music, there is so much. And again, it's the modern stuff mostly that interests me, but not always. Um, and one of the sort of de facto pieces for a flautist, especially in sort of the later grades, is the, the Poulon Sonata. And yeah, you know, I've played it and I've done the thing with that. I'm not sure that it's one of my favourites. I don't know if I've kind of, if it's been done to death a little bit. I've kind of fell out of love with that one a little bit, but nevertheless, it's a really fundamental sort of foundational piece for French flute. Um, the foray fantasy, the foray Cecilia, and they are all standards and they've really shaped my playing as I've grown up with these composers over the years. Um, Gobert's another one, he sort of crops up often. But you know, we're back to Debussy again, and I absolutely love Syrinx. It's kind of um, pan, really, flute pan. Uh, to do with the you know, kind of the the fawn you know on hind legs the satyr satyr senator I've just had a brain freeze there. However, it's a really profound piece of music and and I just love it. I think this one's going to get a bit of a going over again because I just love it and it's it's you know all the mythology to do with Pan or the Syrinx. Um, yeah, it's a really profound piece of music, again, that's really just cropped up into my mind and it just catches your imagination. So I, I do recommend you have a listen to that. There are so many French composers for flute. There's so much. The Chaminade is wonderful as well. I myself haven't played that, but uh, my daughter's played it and I really love it. And one of these days I will get to look at that. And again, it doesn't always have to be horrendously difficult. You know, don't ignore what's under your nose. And on the grade five syllabus for flute, there is um, a beautiful piece in the B section uh, at dusk, uh, try my French again, au crepuscule, crepuscule, I think, actually, let me look. Au crepuscule. <laughs> I've got a lot of way to go, haven't I? And so I just thought I'd just share that moment with you. Well, lots of moments, really. Um, you know, whether it's art, I say Alphonse Mook is one of my favourites. I do remember going to the V&A and absolutely revelling and seeing one of the originals. That was a, a treat. And we've got this marvellous opportunity. We can't go on holiday. 
but the holiday can come to us. So we've got such beautiful music. So whether you want to play it or whether you want to just sit back and listen, grab yourself a, co a coffee, a cafe au lait, maybe even a croissant, and just have a listen to these. I do hope that you enjoy them as much as I do. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thank you.